What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another special live chat edition of the Bombastic Podcast. I am your host, Andrew Ellis, and we are presented by Natty State Sports. Uh, it is a beautiful Friday afternoon, so I appreciate all you guys for joining me. Uh, if you were not here last week, we had a great time previewing the Alabama series, which did not go very well, but uh, we started it off. We did our part as a community, as a Bombastic Podcast, as a community to uh, make it fun, you know, we had a nice time, ch- uh, you know, chilling with each other in the chat, answering questions, vibing, uh, and so I look forward to, you know, hearing what you guys have to say. Looking forward to a great weekend of baseball. Uh, I want to apologize for being five minutes late. I had a large coffee this morning, and uh, as we all know, when you have a large coffee in the coming hours, you know, you got some energy, you got you you got, you got a little pep in your step, but you've also got some business to attend to, and uh, I had to attend to some business. So uh, it is what it is. Better late than never. We're only only a few minutes late. Just had to had to let the chat get settled and get ready to go. I see some of our uh, our usual loyal listeners are already in the chat, already having a good time. Appreciate you guys joining. Um, and for those of you that are brand new that are don't know what this program is, this is the Bombastic Podcast, the best damn baseball podcast you've ever seen. And uh, you know we uh, we have a great time here on this channel. We are on the main Natty State YouTube channel today. Because that's how we go live. That's what we do around here. We're we're a live streaming bunch. But uh, if you are not already subscribed to the Bombastic Podcast on its own separate YouTube channel, uh, pause this. Go do that right now. Come right back. We will wait on you. Uh, or actually, just you know, stay till the end and see if you see how you like it, and then maybe go subscribe afterwards. But uh, make sure you subscribe on all your podcast locations too: Apple, Spotify, whatever, and we're all over social media. So I uh, appreciate it. <laughs> I see somebody already rejoicing. We don't have an Astros hat. No, but I do have a Texan shirt. Appreciate you, Preston, pulling up. I believe that's his name. Uh, yeah, but I do have my Texan shirt on. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's been a rough go of it for the Astros. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting them in timeout, but I'm putting them in timeout. The Astros are in timeout for a little bit. I'll still, I'll still rep them just because I have obnoxious hair and have to wear a hat every day, and eventually that Astros hat is going to get it into, ro- to, into the rotation but uh, my brother's been texting me about all the Astros' losses, and I'm just like, you know, we you know, we, we can afford to take a year off, and I feel like that's what we're doing here. Uh, before we get going, though, before we start getting into some of these comments, which I appreciate you guys pulling up once again. I see them rolling in already. We love that. I uh, did want to talk about what everyone's wondering about, the stash. Stash looks sick, doesn't it? Looks pretty good, huh? Well, uh, the last time I shaved my beard and got a mustache going, it was, I don't remember the exact date, but it was whenever Arkansas got back from Arlington. I shaved my, that Tuesday before they played Grambling, I shaved and got the mustache going. And Arkansas scored like 21 runs in that game. And then, you know, went on a nice little run. They have not lost a home game since then. Uh, they have played a lot of good baseball. They've risen up to number one in the polls and all the way back down to two. Uh, but things have been going well. And I felt like after last weekend, I said, hey, you know what? This offense, they need a little bit of a punch. They need a little something. They need a spark to get them going. So Tuesday morning, I did the same thing, shaved the mustache, and I was a little worried about it after a few innings. You know, I took I took my girl Hillary, who may or may not be in the chat, who knows, uh, but I took her to the game, and I was like, man, if the stash doesn't get them going, who knows what's going to happen with this team? Who knows? But uh, luckily, they came back and won on Tuesday night, so it preserved the the magic that this stash holds. And so I'm hoping, you know, if if, if things get bleak for this Arkansas offense, y'all just got to let me know. And I will shave, I will bring the mustache back. So I mean, at some point in the few weeks, I'll start having some scruff around here, and I won't look as cool. But this offense starts to taper off a little bit. That's when we'll. That's when we'll bring the stash back. So that's how we're gonna do. But uh, let's just get right into it, boys. We got our boy L, who <laughs> commented this last night. Said, "I'm ready, Unc. I appreciate L. L's the man, dude. He's one of my favorite commenters of all time. Uh, among all the weirdos I've met on the internet or interacted with, L's really high up there." And uh, my boy Hayden, another friend of the program, said, Ellis, name the day and location of the inaugural bombastic watch party. So, okay, I, you know, Hayden, I, I'm willing to do it for free. You know, if you want if you want to just simply get a few guys together and go watch a game, I'm sure we can make that happen, you know, wherever you want. I know you and I have talked about some locations behind closed doors. But, uh, you know, it's up to it's up to – the businesses to reach out, say what's up to us, you know, set this sucker up for us. Obviously, we've done some, we've done some stuff with Natty State Sports at Flyway. Uh, where else have we gone? Twin Peaks. We've done some stuff. We got all kinds of stuff lined up for the Tour de Central Arkansas next week. 
So I don't know. Maybe down the stretch we'll have something going on where we do like a watch party and we all get together and watch a game. I would love to do something like that, even if it is unofficial, honestly. But uh, I do also want to go ahead, and while, I'm, while I have you here, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, I want to go ahead and just talk about it. So next week on Tuesday, when I say next week, I mean in like five days, uh, Arkansas is going to be playing baseball in Little Rock, as they do once a year at Dickey Stevens Park. I believe they will be taking on the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Um, but that whole week, Natty State Sports is going to be doing like a tour day Central Arkansas is what we're calling it. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So Monday night in Conway, we're going to be at Rock and Roll Sushi. So if you're in that area, pull up. Attendance is mandatory. We're going to be doing the John Neighbors Show live there from about 4 to 6. Tuesday before the game, we're going to be at Twin Peaks in Little Rock. Um, address, I don't know. We'll probably you know look on our social medias because we'll be tweeting it out and stuff like that. But uh, we will be having another thing on Tuesday before the game. Obviously, we'll go to the game. Then Wednesday, we're going to be at Town Pump in Little Rock as well. And then I think there's one more thing Thursday, but I don't know if I'm going to be there for that one. But I just want to let you guys know, be on the lookout, be on our social medias looking for. We're going to be going all over the place, doing a lot of fun stuff. So uh, come out, support, come say what's up. And, uh, you know, who knows? We can start maybe. If, we, if these things are successful, it'll be a lot easier for us to do some type of watch party or whatever it is. Uh, you know, in the future, down the stretch, especially as baseball season really starts to heat up. Because for us, it's always baseball season, but, you know, it'll really start to heat up here in a little bit. Uh, Dennis Fuller wants to know any update on digs for the weekend. Uh, no update as of right now. I mean, we'll see, honestly. I mean, DVH, you know, gave him the two days off in the midweek. Uh, they said his shoulder has really been bothering him. I also saw he has his wrist taped up because he took a, a tough landing there during that Alabama series on his wrist. I think Kendall Diggs was... Very banged up, like more banged up than he was letting on. I think he was pulling a Peyton Stovall from last year and just kind of not saying anything and suffering in silence because he wanted to keep playing every day, wanted to do his part, was hoping he'd kind of turn around. Uh, I think it was best for him that they finally decided to, you know, give him a day off or two. We'll see if that helped. Who knows? I mean, if you don't see him in the lineup tonight, that kind of, that's your indication that he's not not all the way back to 100%. But, Dennis, I don't expect this to be like a – Big deal. This isn't like a Peyton Stovall, like, oh, he's going to have to have surgery and then be out for nine months or whatever. I don't think it's anything like that. I think he just, you know, banged up like a lot of people are this time of year. He was gutting through it for his guys, but uh, there's no need to do that on this team. So with Kendall Diggs, they don't need him to be – I mean, obviously you'd like for him to be good every day, but, you know, we know who Kendall Diggs is. We know who he what he brings to the table. We know he's going to have a spot in the middle of this Arkansas lineup. They need him at 100% down the stretch. So however long it takes for him to get back to 100%, let him let him do what he's got to do. Really appreciate it. Dr. Sauerbaum, classic. What's up? What's good, Andrew? Appreciate you saying what's up to us in the chat. Uh, Mary Ellen, another Hall of Fame commenter, says, I bet Hillary loves the mustache. She does. Of course she does. In fact, she actually literally does. Um, she's she, she kind of she's kind of into it. I don't know for whatever reason. And uh, some, when I shave it, and I hardly at this point I hardly ever actually shave my mustache. If I'm shaving, I'm just shaving the bottom and then kind of leaving the stash. But she uh, she's not a huge fan whenever I shave it. And for Christmas, she got me these cool little trimmers so I can like trim it up so it doesn't you know doesn't doesn't be an issue. Uh, let's see, Eureka String says I might crawl out from the dank cave I live in to show up at a watch party. All right, I support you. Yeah, do that, Eureka Strings. Another another great Hall of Fame commenter we have. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Pull up out of your dank cave. Uh, I pull I pull up out of mine every day to come do this garbage. So I mean, hey, might as well. Uh, Ozzy Maverick Legend says Arkansas wins 3-0, smoking that rowdy rooster pack. I love it. Uh, for anybody that is not familiar with Ozzy, you're missing out. Just a tremendous Twitter follower. Love what he brings to the table. Love the energy he brings. Uh, Ozzy, we rock with you, man. Appreciate you bringing the fire that you always bring. Uh, he also says he's willing to make a big sacrifice for a natty, and uh, we support that as well. Uh, Jaron Green says, who would you DH, Wagner or Souza? And if Souza, how do you get Wagner in the lineup? Because I feel like he can help. So I think there's a lot of options here. So for one, you know, every weekend, this, is, this has happened for like a month now, every single weekend Arkansas faces a left-handed pitcher, and Nolan Souza is not in the lineup, and everyone freaks out. And they're like, how what, How do you take Nolan Souza out of the lineup? Uh, the reason you do it is because he's hitting 158 against left-handed pitching. Obviously, as a, obviously as a freshman lefty bat, facing high-level lefties is like not ideal. 
So I think that's more about just putting him in the position to succeed. So I, I think, you know, that helps with a guy like Jack Wagner, who had a really productive midweek series against Texas Tech, I might add. Uh, him and Jason Jones both, I really think that against left-handed pitching in particular, those are times where they can really, you know, make something happen. Uh, the issue for Wagner, though, is Ben McLaughlin. I just mentioned how uh, how Nolan is hitting 158 against lefties. Ben McLaughlin is not. He's hitting 333 against lefties. Peyton Stovall is good against lefties. Uh, so it's like, you know, there's no real platoon there for him at first base. But I do think with Souza, I think there's going to be plenty of time Arkansas is facing left-handed starters where they might not want to have Souza in the lineup, which I know will upset some of you. And look, I love Nolan Souza. I think he's one of the most talented players on the roster, period, regardless of position. I also am just kind of the, uh, of the belief that like he's so good, you kind of just need to go ahead and play him every day and just let him sink or swim. Obviously, he's not as good against lefties, but you know he's going to be in the everyday lineup next year and the year after, and there's going to be plenty of left-handed starters for him to face. Might as well go ahead and start getting him those reps now. But you know, back to your question, though, I think for a guy like Wagner, that's the most realistic path. Uh, also, who knows how this works out? I mean, Jared Spraglot... We talked a lot about Jared Spreglot last week. I think at this point we've all determined Jared Spreglot's pretty good. Jared Spreglot's going to stay in the lineup. He's done enough to to earn that right or earn that benefit of the doubt. Um, but who knows if Nolan Souza's playing third base, maybe that's your path to Jack Wagner getting in there at DH. And who knows, Jack Wagner also could play first, could play left field. Uh, so we'll see if they ever throw him back out on the field. But I'd say the ship has probably sailed there. Um, yeah, man, you know, Jaron, there's, there's like really no shortage of guys who could help. You know, and I agree with you. I think Jack Wagner can help. I mean, he has helped. He's 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 made the most of his opportunities here lately, and I don't think you will stop seeing him. I think he's going to continue to get in there. But in terms of every day, it just is really tough. I mean, Ross Lovich could help this team. Ross Lovich has, has had moments where he's really helped this team, but I don't, you know, I think it's a little bit tough path for him. I think Wagner's path is a little bit easier just because you have such an obvious X factor of Nolan Souza against left-handed guys that, you know, I don't, you know, I just don't think they're going to consistently throw Nolan Susan out there, especially against legitimate left-handed arms. I think they want to keep him away from those matchups. And also there's pinch hit stuff, there's replacements, there's all kinds of ways to where Arkansas has, you know, 13, 14 position players who could play. I mean, do you think back, I've referenced it a few times even on the show, like you think back to 2022, uh, that Arkansas team with Battles and Wallace and Robert Moore and all these guys, Position player wise, like they had Zach Gregory in left field, and him and Borfin were kind of battling down the stretch. Which, you know, we don't have to talk about what that, you know that situation. That was wild. Uh, but it was really just Borfin would be in there in the outfield as a replacement. Dylan Leach every now and then at catcher, but there weren't really. And Kendall Diggs, that weirdly enough, was at DH there off the bench. But Arkansas didn't have a ton of lineup shuffling. They didn't have a ton of position player depth where they were like moving guys around all the time. It wasn't like a different lineup every day. They didn't really have as many options. I think what makes this Arkansas team, you know, unique is that they do have those options. And so, you know, if Arkansas is facing particular matchups, I think there's, there's, you know, you might see a guy like Jack Wagner, Ross Lovish, Jason Jones, whoever, Peyton Holt, like whoever, there's no shortage of guys who can step up and do the job for Arkansas. So I think that's a huge uh, factor for Arkansas down the stretch. And I think Jack Wagner is going to be right in the middle of all that. Um, let's see. Mary Ellen says, I was waiting for the Kendall Diggs has actually been hurt all season from DBH. It's the most obvious answer to his poor performance this semester. Uh, yeah, I will say this though, Mary, I, I feel like people have been overstating Kendall Diggs' struggles. Like literally a week ago, the dude had like a 950 OPS, like not that long ago. He was just, he was pretty much on track to do everything he was doing last year. He was hitting around 300. He's slugging like 600. Uh, he was he was doing a lot, man. I, I, I feel like it was not like – it's really just in the last like 10 days where Kendall's really kind of struggled a little bit. Uh, in the Ole Miss series, he ended up having three hits in that game three. It was a little bit rough there in the first two games. But I, I didn't see Kendall struggling a ton up until the last like two weeks. And I think that's when the, the numbers really started to dip down. Because uh, before that, if you go back, he was hitting you know close to 300 for most of the year. Uh, and let me go ahead and fact check this while I'm at it. So yeah, Kendall Diggs on March 29th, Kendall Diggs was hitting 297. Uh, and then, you know, now it's kind of started to trickle down. But even April 6th, he was hitting 286 after having three hits against Ole Miss. Uh, and his slugging percentage, and he's been driving the ball a lot. Uh, I, You know, I don't think there was anything crazy going on all season long. I think it's just something that's been bothering him, and then it's really ramped up here lately. 
Um, but yeah, okay. Preston says, let's does Holt start and center again? I don't think you can rule it out, guys. So look, I want to pull up some numbers here real quick. These are just now I know everyone loves batting average, and I've talked about batting average a lot. I feel like batting average is a little bit overrated. But here are the OPSs of Arkansas's outfielders in question here. I didn't I didn't have Kendall Diggs in this equation because I don't think Kendall Diggs is when he's healthy, I don't think he's in danger of losing a spot or anything. But okay, Peyton Holt has an OPS of 830. OPS for the the children at home, on base percentage plus slugging. The reason I cite it is because I love it. It's I think it's the all encompassing. Like I think that's the number one stat. If you're trying to rank individual players, I feel like OPS usually tells a decent amount of the story. Now this these are varying sample sizes, so I don't want to live and die with this. But Peyton Holt has an OPS of 830 on the year. Ross Lovich also has an OPS of exactly 830. His a little bit more deceiving because after the Missouri series where he balled out, it was like 130, you know, 1.3 or something like that. Like he was crushing. Uh, he has not been hitting in the last few weeks, and that's why he's kind of tapered off here a little bit. And he's not a great defender, so I feel like he's kind of the odd man out here in this conversation. Uh, Jason Jones, would you believe me if I said Jason Jones has an 814 OPS? Reason why? He's slugging 470, which is higher than all these guys we're talking about right now. Uh, and he works his walks. Jason Jones has worked six walks this year, and his walk rate is actually down from what it was as a freshman. And his limited sample size as a freshman, he was walking a ton. He had an, OP, uh, an on-base percentage around 400 as a freshman, despite hitting under 200, which just tells you Jason Jones is a patient guy. He's going to take his walks. He's going to take his 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 uh, his balls when he needs to. Um, and he has that power threat. And so if he's even you know slugging 470. For Jason Jones, like I feel like that's a low number considering how much he has left in the tank there. I mean, this is a dude that's hitting 224 in a limited sample size on the year, but you're still seeing him show up with the power production. He's drawn six walks this year, and Will Edmondson has drawn nine. Now, Will Edmondson's awesome. He gets on base. He, you know, he hits the ball. He's pretty consistent, pretty solid. Does not like taking his walks. And a lot of those nine walks were in non conference play. Um, matter of fact, let me go ahead and pull it up real quick. In SEC play, Will Edmondson has drawn two walks. And uh, Jason Jones has uh, drawn one walk in SEC play and on three at-bats or three plate appearances. Uh, so it's like one of those things where I think that's a big part for Jason Jones. But I say all this, I'm, I'm taking a long time. I'm dipping around here. Will Edmondson has an OPS of 788. Ty Wilmsmeyer has an OPS of 555. Ty Wilmsmeyer's the best defender out of all those guys I just listed, and it's not even really that close. I think he's an awesome defender in center field. But I feel like people, when they say, oh, well, he's a really good defender, even though his bat's a little bit down, I don't think people realize how big the gap is. Like, all those guys I just listed had OPSs from 788 to 830, all kind of similar, like interchangeable. Like, all Peyton Holt, Ross Lovich, Jason Jones, and Will Edmondson are all four very different skill sets. But they're doing about the same offensively, just in different ways. Jones has a little bit more power. He's not getting on base a ton. Will Edmondson's getting on base a little bit more, but he doesn't have not slugging a ton, not drawing walks. Ross Lovich is kind of just average all around the board outside of a really good week against Missouri. And Peyton Holt has kind of been the X factor here, who's starting to pick it up a little bit here lately. Uh, Wilmsmeyer is on a completely different level than those guys offensively. I mean, he's just not bringing much to the table. And so I feel like when people say, like, oh, he's a good defender, not a great bat, it almost is underselling how big the gap is. So, Preston, to answer your question, I think Wilmsmeyer is still going to get starts in center field. I mean, he's earned the right. He's a really good defender, experienced guy. Like, I get it. But uh, the more this lineup continues to struggle and continues to really put it together and take that next step, the more pressure I think there is for Arkansas to get legitimate production out of their outfield – and so I wouldn't be stunned at all if you start seeing guys like Holt, uh, even Edmondson being in center field, I think gives Arkansas a little bit more offense. Uh, I wouldn't be stunned at all to see that be how they get a guy like Jason Jones into the lineup more. Uh, and Ryan McDaniel Daniel followed up with, yo, what up, Andrew? Are we going to see more Jason Jones and Peyton Holt this weekend? Uh, these questions go hand in hand. I think yes. I, I expect at least, I'm going to go out on a limb and say one Jason Jones start this weekend. I'm basing that off of gut feel and just how he played these last couple weeks. His at-bats have been a lot better, and he texted me back this morning. When Jason Jones texts me back, I know that I'm getting good news most of the time. So uh, I feel pretty good about that. I look forward to watching that guy play, man. I, I'm such a Jason Jones fan, just not only as a player, 
as a person, I'm really cheering hard for that kid. Obviously, I had him on my podcast, but like just a really good dude, really good family. Would love nothing more to see that guy get going. And uh, I think he's the kind of guy, like when you're talking about an Arkansas offense that's kind of stuck in that first, second gear, like aren't able to really, you know, build on anything and have some consistent success. I think Jason Jones, the way he's swinging it, the power he brings, can just bring a little bit more of a dimension to the lineup that some of these guys haven't. And I think Peyton Holt is the same situation. I think he brings a little bit of that spark. I mean, you saw him the other day with the clutch hitting in the ninth inning. Really big-time stuff. Uh, I I think those two guys are – I would love to see both of them get more and more action here down the stretch. Uh, Carson Romel says, how do you think Molina holds up? I guess I need you to be more specific, Carson. What do you mean? Mason Molina, how does he hold up? Well, he's very good. I don't know. What are you what, what are you what are you referring to? Yeah, I thought Mason Molina's outing last week was one of his most encouraging. It was the first time we saw him get through six innings uh for Arkansas this season. And especially because early on he was facing a lot of adversity, gave up the two home runs, had runners on, ton of traffic he was dealing with. The fact that he was able to kind of stabilize it and get back control of the start and get through six innings, only allow him the two runs, really gave Arkansas a chance to win. I thought uh I thought that was awesome. And so I'm I'm encouraged by what I saw, and I'm also looking forward to seeing how he handles this weekend. I, I think he's – Mason Molina is a stud, man. I think he's been everything Arkansas thought he was going to be in good and bad way. Like, I just think he was he has been exactly as advertised, maybe even a little bit better. So it's been really good to see. Dennis says, I feel like Wilms Myers this year is John Bolton. Got to play him for D, even if he's not given much with the bat. Uh, I mean, you know, I think that's that's a fair comparison. I think that, that he's the guy. I think I actually – if someone goes back and listens, I might do it later. I'm pretty sure I said something like this preseason where I was like, I think Wilmsmeyer is going to be the John Bolton of this year uh, where we're kind of, you know, everyone's kind of underwhelmed, but it just is what it is. Uh, I don't know. Here's the, the only thing is you say you got to play him for the D even if he's not giving much of the bat. Do you? Do you got to play him? Uh, I think he's definitely the best defender how big is that gap? I really don't know. We haven't seen a ton. I mean, Peyton Holt's been playing center for about five days, so I don't know if it, if we can really assess how good he is in a, as a center fielder, and I don't know how much we can really assess how how trustworthy you know DVH views him to be. If he views that as a legitimate weekend option, I would assume he wasn't like DVH wasn't doing it just to do it. wasn't just throwing Peyton Holt out there just to just for the hell of it. Uh, I think he was it was kind of a little test, and so we'll see. Um, I, I you know I, I I mostly agree. I'm not 100 percent convinced you have to play him, especially if your offense is struggling to get going. You need all the offense you can get. Uh, Doctor Sauerbaum says, "Is it bad? I wish Leach stayed." Yeah, that's bad. Why do you, why why <laughs> what did you want Leach to stay for? I mean, it wouldn't have the first. However, the first two weekends went or first two years went for him. Probably would have went pretty similarly. I don't think he was going to be ever be an everyday catcher at Arkansas. Uh, good kid. You know, I like Dylan Leach. We'll never forget that cycle, but yeah, I would say, what did you want him to stay for? What was he going to do? Uh, Will Lennox says, really wish we can get Jason Jones in the lineup. Him and Souza would get more power in the lineup. If Souza could get better chance at third, she could show his glove. Uh, yeah, Souza's, Souza's uh, I'm glad that they've been getting him those reps to play third base because I think that's going to be important. I don't know where he's going to end up playing next year. I, I, I've been asked that question like nine times in the last two weeks. Uh but I, I just think he's – it could be second, it could be third, it could be first, it could be center field. I think it's going to depend on kind of how the lineup plays around him and who they bring in. But I think getting him those reps just to kind of see what he can do at each spot is nice. Uh, so, yeah, I'm with you. And Jason Jones, huge Jason Jones guy. would love to see him get in the lineup. I think he's the guy – If you're, he's the X factor. If you can, He has a higher ceiling than a lot of these guys in this lineup – uh, now, obviously, reaching that ceiling is a lot easier said than done, but I still think you know it, it would be it would be worth it to see if you can get some more juice out of that. Uh, boy, Christian Cheatham says hello, Andrew. What's up, Christian? Had a really good time seeing Christian the other day at the game. That's my guy. I love him. Uh, Ozzy Maverick, another one of my guys, says, "Who is South Carolina's ace? Uh, South Carolina's ace is a young man by the name of I believe is it Eli Jones? Eli Jones? It's like Eli something. Eli." something but anyways he's pitching tomorrow not tonight i'm glad you asked this ozzy because now that leads me to another good point i gotta break uh before i I recorded the show yesterday before south carolina had announced their rotation and as soon as i hit publish they announced that they would be doing their they would be throwing their ace on saturday not friday 
Uh, we've seen this happen a few times where teams kind of aren't dying to see what their starting pit, their best starting pitcher can do against Hagen Smith. Uh, I, I think this is another one of those where just people were kind of punting that first game against Hagen Smith. I think Arkansas is going to win tonight very easily. Uh, their ace is not bad. He's got like his stuff. If you if you if you watched him pitch and you see his stuff, you would think that he would get more strikeouts than he has on the year. Like he's on, he's like ninety two to ninety five, heavy sink on his fastball. He's got really good stuff. Mixes speeds well. Throws a ton of strikes, but is not striking out a ton of dudes. I think it's like thirty eight strikeouts in forty five innings or something like that. That's the type of stuff you see at like mid majors. Dudes that are throwing eighty seven. So I'm interested to see tonight. He's been really good for for South Carolina. His numbers on the year are good. Had a really good outing last week against Florida. I think he went six innings, only gave up one run. But he's a pitch to contact a little bit more than you see out of most aces who really are like swing and miss, you know, like Hagen Smith. It's really tough to get anything going against him offensively because you're just going to swing and miss so much per inning. Uh, This guy is not going to shut Arkansas down in that way where he's going to like have nine strikeouts tonight. But as we've seen with this Arkansas team, they love to ground out softly to second base and shortstop. I could see him getting that sinker ball going and kind of having one of those outings where Arkansas has like four or five hits through four innings, but they're not able to really get the big one that gets them over the top. Uh, So he's not going to shut Arkansas down. And again, this is going to be tomorrow. You're not going to see their ace tonight. Uh, and he's really by far their best starting pitcher. So there's no case to be made of like, oh, we thought this guy was better. Like this guy, Eli Jones, is by far their best pitcher. Um, let's see. Will Lennox says, why can't Wilmsmeyer get his bat going? He had 11 home runs last year for Mizzou. I guess he was more free to swing bat there. Uh, well, one, he didn't have 11 home runs last year. I don't think he had 11 home runs in his career, uh, let alone at last year. I think he hit like six or seven. But if you look at, uh, if I, if you want to be, if I want to be honest with you, Will, if you go look at Ty Wilmsmeyer's career stats, just year by year, if you go to baseballreference.com, they're, they're at great website, by the way, baseballreference.com will have his stats you'll see that last year was a complete anomaly because he was like 250, 260, 240, you know, one to two home runs a year, two to three. Last year he hits 311 and has seven home runs. Completely came out of nowhere. And if you go look at Ross Lovich, who is also at Arkansas not playing, go look at his career. Last year was a complete anomaly. He was like 250, 260, not a ton of power. Then randomly last year he's hitting 300 and he's got some pop before he got hurt. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, I don't know what was going on with uh, with Missouri's field last year, their offense, but all their guys seem to overachieve and, you know, put up stats that they couldn't replicate. I don't know if the wind was just blowing out a ton. But uh, if you look at Wilmsmeyer's career, he was never really an offensive guy. Uh, he hit 300 last year, which they keep citing. He didn't hit it all in the fall, didn't hit it all in the spring at Arkansas. Uh, pretty much outside of his, in his entire five-year career, last year, was a complete outlier. Like it just doesn't match up with what he normally does. And uh, I think I, whenever he committed, I did the same thing you did. And a lot of other people did where I'm like, Oh, he seemed to have a breakout year as a senior. Maybe he can build on that at Arkansas. Uh, Turns out it was the other way around. It was actually really just a complete fluke year. That's what it turns out to quick shout out to Nolan Souza's 1.1 OPS. Shout out Mary Ellen for the stats. Appreciate that. Uh, Let's see with Souza speed. Bo asks, with Sousa Speed, couldn't he get a shot at center field? Did he get outfield reps earlier this year? Yes. I I said this last week on the show. The day he came to film the bombastic interview with me and Jason Jones, uh, that day at practice, he was just, he was like, yeah, they threw me out in center field today just to like kind of, or I don't know if it was center field. He said outfield. He didn't specify which one. It might have been left. Who knows? Uh, But with his speed, yes, they've definitely thought about it. I'm going to guess that that day didn't go as well as they hoped or else we would have probably seen him at center field in a midweek or something like that. But, uh, you know, I think that's something they'll explore more in the offseason. But he's a good enough athlete. Nolan Souza is a good enough athlete to play pretty much uh, wherever. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. That kid is, I mean, whatever your expectation is for Nolan Souza, don't be surprised if he surpasses it. I mean, he's already surpassed what I expected out of him as a freshman. I mean, just seems like that dude is different. Uh, Devin Talley says, hope I'm not jinxing it. Bama up 5-0 on ATM in the fourth on A&M. Uh, we, you know, that game is on right now. Curtis and Scotty have it on in the background. I can't I can't read the scoreboard, but yeah, 5 to nothing. How about that? It was 1-0 whenever I came in here to do this, so look at that. Uh, Bama, Bama's really well-rounded. Like, they're not 
a threat. Like if Arkansas played a three game series against Bama right now, I would bet on Arkansas to win it. I know they just lost to them. Uh, doesn't matter where. I don't know if they could beat Arkansas again, but Bama's really well rounded. They just kind of similar to South Carolina this weekend. Honestly, it's going to be a very similar test in terms of they don't blow you away in any regard. But lineup one through seven is pretty solid. They've got that really good Bryce. I think it's Bryce Miller, their uh, third baseman from JUCO, who's having an unreal year. They have a couple guys at the top that are you got to really circle, but they're pretty solid top to bottom. Pitching staff again, like I think their ace. Uh, crap, what's that dude's name? What's that dude's name? Ben Hess is there is their their guy who's not pitching in this first game here. Uh, you know, I think he's better than his numbers showed. We talked about that a little bit last week. The lefty they have thrown today, he's having a really good outing. Pitched really well last weekend. Uh, yeah, I think I think Alabama's a tough out, man. They're not a like threat to like really go on a run and like win the title or anything, but they could absolutely upset somebody. That's a team you do not want in your regional. Um, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, Ryan McDaniel says Molina looked good. Zero walks is a great sign. Yeah, I mean. Arkansas starting pitchers, they just walk dudes. And you obviously you don't want anyone to walk dudes, but th- when you have stuff like they have, it just is going to happen sometimes. And it's like, I'm not saying you just need to accept it and be like, hey, you're just going to walk four guys every week. Uh, but it's just a thing that happens. And when you have swing and miss stuff, it's a little bit harder to control. Uh, but I think Molina does a good job of he, – he'll mix in his walks at times where it's okay – uh, like, you know, two outs, you've got a power hitter at the plate, maybe a pitch around him a little bit. Uh, it's not a ton. You know, he had a couple, he had a week, uh, leadoff walk a couple weeks ago that really came back to bite him. Uh, I think that they're, you know, all those guys, like, you just kind of trust. Like, they've shown they can throw strikes when they really need to hunker down and get some strikes. Hagan's really good about that. Like, he'll, like, walk the bases loaded, and then he's like, all right, I'll start throwing strikes now. Uh, so, look, I, you know, walks are frustrating for anybody. Um, but with this starting rotation, more often than not, they seem to be in pretty good control of just when to push it, when to not, when to really lock. The, like they're really good at locking down with runners on scoring, runners in scoring position, and getting it done. Uh, you know, we'll see. Let's see what Mary Ellen has to say. In my opinion, this team doesn't need another bat in the lineup. We got plenty of offensive firepower, even with the glove first guy at the bottom of the lineup, and we can always get someone off the bench. Yeah, Mary. You know, respect your respect your work, but uh, the numbers do not agree with you that Arkansas has enough firepower because. They're like bottom five in every stat in the SEC, offensively, especially in conference play. Uh, obviously, this team has a lot of potential, and uh, there's no doubt that like there's a there's room for Arkansas to be better. I would expect them to be better down the stretch, but just right as of right now, Arkansas is just not swinging the bats well. They haven't swung well in conference play at all. Uh, their power has been better in conference play, but not still not you know where you want it to be. They're about seventh or eighth in slugging in conference play. You know. If if this if they keep hitting the way they did last week, I don't think you can afford to start Ty Wilmsmeyer in center field, frankly. Uh, but it, overall, big picture, I do agree with you that like you know if you have Kendall Diggs and he's playing well, you've got Peyton Stovall, Vahivo Loy, if you can get Hudson White going, if the guys that we expected to be good preseason, if they live up to their potential, yeah, absolutely, you can afford to have a, a two twenty hitter in the nine hole who's not really affecting you and playing good defense. But if those other guys don't step up and start producing the way that they're capable of, I think it forces DVH's hand a little bit, and that's why you're going to continue seeing guys like Peyton Holton center field and Will Edmondson getting his work and stuff like that. Uh, Harley Hooten says, do you think inconsistent playing time is hurting all the outfield options at the plate? If DVH picked three guys and lived with it, would it help in the long run? So it's tough, like, Pretty much, yes. In a nutshell, I definitely think that it's a little bit tough. It's it's tough for any hitter to get going when you are you don't know when your next at-bat, you don't know when your next start is going to come. Uh, but ultimately, I it's hard to knock DVH for doing it because it's like none of these guys have proven on a consistent basis that like they've made it you know, a thing where it's like they've taken their opportunity and run with it. Anytime it looks like someone's about to do it, they just don't, you know, like early in the year, it looked like Jason Jones was going to do it. And then he just kind of went through a slump. It looked like Ross Lowich was going to do it after the first week of SEC play. Then he goes through a huge slump. Will Edmondson, same thing. Like uh, Will Edmondson's a little bit more consistent, but it's just like Will Edmondson, starting Will Edmondson every day is almost like committing to just having a pretty good, you know, pretty solid option that's not going to kill you or win you any games. Like he's just kind of there. Um, ultimately, like I, I, I predicted like a month ago, that they were going to reach that point where they just say, hey, Jason Jones is the youngest, most talented option. Let's just throw him in there and uh, see what happens. Me personally, I, I kind of want that to happen. 
I've been wanting it to happen all year. I've been very open. Uh, but at the end of the day, Jason, who I love, has to go out there and make it happen. If if they if they do something like that, he's got to be consistent. He's got to at least put together some consistent ABs. We'll see if either of them are going to make it work. Uh, so big picture, yes, I think it's definitely hurt. It's harder to hit when your your playing time is inconsistent. But at the same time, I don't think any any of those three guys that I just mentioned have the right to be like offended and be like, oh, why am I not playing every day? Because it's like you, you got to go out there and do it, man. You got to go out there and be consistent and bring that threat. Uh, so we'll see if anyone's able to do it. Um, yeah, and Ryan McDaniel said the difference with Bolton was there was no one else that could play shortstop defensively last year. That is true information. Uh, that is definitely true. Like Harold Cole is a good baseball player, and I like him. I really did. Like I was, I was one of those guys riding for him at the beginning of the season. Like, hey, come on, come on, come on. He's just not a shortstop defensively, uh, and he's a lot better. He's a pretty solid second baseman, I would say. Pretty solid at third base, honestly. Just not a shortstop defensively. Uh, and even then, you know, Ryan, I was kind of saying like, hey, you can almost give up having some stuff at shortstop there. Like you can almost get away with it. Uh, ever since Casey Martin existed in 2019, I think DVH has convinced himself, like, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to just sacrifice sh- uh, defense at a place like shortstop. Center field is easier to do it. And I think that's, you know, that's a, it's why I agree with what you're saying. It's a good point. Center field, it's a lot easier to just put a good athlete out there. And obviously there's a drop off between what Ty Wilmsmark can do and what everyone else can do. But I don't think it's as big and as drastic and would cost Arkansas runs the way it would at a place like shortstop or catcher or something like that. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Um, L says, you think Butch Thompson is hot on the hot seat? They had a pretty solid portal class. I don't know. I mean, I'm not plugged in at Auburn. I haven't really like taken time to really go through and look at it. Uh, you can help me here. Did they miss the tournament last year? Am I correct in thinking they missed the tournament? Uh, I don't know if he's on the hot seat just because the the standard at Auburn is not super high. Uh, it's not like they have like first class facilities, a first class park, and first class fan base who's like gonna be begging. And Butch Thompson has accomplished a lot at Arkansas at, at Auburn, so who knows? Um, but I, you know. We'll see. I'd have to really go back and give you a more educated uh, answer later if I can go back and look at all like what he's done and the recent trends and stuff. I bet just just gut feel. I feel like he probably will get another year, but we'll go in the next year like hot seat. But uh, yeah, they've they've had some some questionable years here. I remember in twenty twenty one, it just felt like they would lose every close game. Like they started off like one and six in conference play, and uh, you know just were never able to overcome that or that slow start and so it's a little bit a little bit of a tough luck and I think this year's team is way better than their two and 13 record indicates but you know you just can't make a you can't make a living in the SEC underachieving and that's what they've been doing a little bit uh Dennis who's done a great job commenting for us today said you see Jack Caglione's 513 foot bomb this week uh was it 513 I think it was 516 I, I saw a few different numbers uh but I yes I saw the bomb Jack is an unreal talent, man. Like he really is Shohei Otani. Uh, he's been struggling a little bit on the mound. Uh, you know, as their Sunday starter, he's had some some rough outings here and there. His stuff is like unbelievable. Uh, I wonder with him if they're just gonna have to make a decision and just kind of like when he gets to the pros. Cause I think, I mean, stuff wise, talent wise, he obviously can he's a the tools are all over the place. And as a pitcher, his stuff is unreal. But I think I think I have a hard time believing that he he isn't just an MLB level hitter that they need to just go all in and make that happen at Florida. Obviously, I understand, but I wonder professionally how long he's going to try to do both. Um, you know, and I, apparently he's he's not going to be a starting pitcher in the MLB. I'd be stunned if he were start like starting every day. But uh, it'd be really cool to see him be like the starting first baseman for some team, and then come in and get two outs in the eighth inning on the mound. Like that'd be pretty sick, man. He's a really fun talent, and I think like he's worth the price of admission alone next weekend. Cannot wait for those games. Uh, Hagen's also going to just undress him on the mound, left on left. He's gonna he's gonna, he's gonna annihilate him. Uh, let's see. I would have liked him last year over Roland, but yeah, I see what you're saying too. Uh, I would not have liked Dylan Leach over Roland. I don't think Dylan Leach is uh, – I mean, Dylan Leach is playing at, what, like Missouri State or something like that, uh, which, like, Missouri State's you know solid program. Roland was one of the better defensive catchers in the SEC last year, uh, and, frankly, Dylan Leach, as a hitter, even when he wasn't playing every day, wasn't producing at a high level, I feel like if Dylan Leach were catching every day at Arkansas, he would have been hitting about 160. 
So uh, I don't think you would have loved him too much, but we, we'll see. Um, let's see. Yeah, Will Lennox. Okay, I, I like this, Will. He says, we need to use Wilmsmeyer like DVH is as a pinch runner when we have a lead after six or seven innings, put him in center. I'm all for that. I mean, it was a great move the other day when he brings him in as a pinch runner. He scores the go-ahead run, and then he comes in and makes a nice play in center field. I'm all for that. I, I think that's awesome. Uh, I think that's a that's – a, I mean, and there's like, like I said – there's room for all of these guys, like 13, 14 dudes, to really help Arkansas win as a position player. I think that's that's definitely a good role for them. There's plenty of room for that. Uh, Preston says, is Ben McLaughlin going to win gold glove at first? Hell, I don't know if he's going to win a gold glove, but he should absolutely be in the mix. I haven't been looking at uh, SEC first baseman to really like dive into the film to see if they're putting on a show or anything. But, uh, yeah, Ben McLaughlin's been really good at first base, like better than, than I expected. We talked about that plenty last week. Uh, yeah, man, we'll we'll see how it works. Uh, Brooks Jones says, which game do we have the best chance of losing, if any? They got a chance to lose games. Uh, not the Hagen-Smith game tonight. They're not going to lose this one. But uh, I would say tomorrow's game certainly should be up there just because you have South Carolina's ace going against Arkansas's non-ace, which like Mason Molina, it's not like he's uh, you know, some scrub or anything. But I would say that's the game that it seems like South Carolina is going to go all in on is game two. So we'll see. I'd say that's probably the most likely but uh, but who knows, man? I, like last week, I don't remember what I said when I was asked this question. I think I might have said game three. And they ended up losing both. Uh, but yeah, game two probably was one you would want to circle. But uh, who knows? Andrew, do you follow recruiting? Next year's class isn't highly touted. What do we know about the class so far? Well, here's what we know about the class so far, Ryan, is uh, it's going to be a heavy portal class. It's going to be a heavy portal class completely. And I think, honestly, it's smart. Because last year's high school class for Arkansas was such a loaded like two loaded almost. Uh, they had, I mean, think about you had the number one class in the country by a wide margin, and that doesn't even include guys like Aiden Miller, who signed. Uh, what was that other kid from Colorado? Forgot his name. Another short Walker Martin. Uh, you had two. Your you know, basically your top three prospects all signed, and Arkansas still had the number one class in the country. Uh, you know, I would love to sit here and pretend like building through high school recruiting is the way to go all the time. It's really not. Uh, I think you can get a lot of arms that can help you as freshmen. It's really, really hard to find position players that come through and help you right away on the, you know, in the lineup. Like even no, like Nolan Souza is a is like a demigod, and even he is not even firmly in the everyday lineup. You know, uh, like all the all the most talented position players Arkansas has brought in the last three years, we always like pencil them in right away for you know, starting, hitting in the middle of the lineup and all this. But, you know, it's it's a lot easier said than done. I mean, Mason Neville, Jason Jones, Ryder Helfrick, uh, Souza's obviously kind of worked in there. He's probably the cream of this crop. Uh, and even even Peyton Stovall, who's as, like, well-rounded a freshman talent as you could have, it took him, like, three months to get going. So I think it's kind of smart to pick and choose. Like, obviously, you don't want to be dependent on the portal every year, uh, although to an extent you're going to bring in portal guys every year. But – I like that Arkansas kind of went all in on last year's freshman class. It got a ton of blue chip dudes. I mean, Gackle's clearly blue chip. Dietz is blue chip. I mean, he hasn't proved it yet at the college level, but in terms of a prospect, I think Helfrick is a blue chip prospect. I think Souza is a blue chip prospect. Like, they went in and got some building blocks that can kind of set the standard for this program in the next few years. And you can fill in with portal guys behind them. So I would love to talk recruiting with you. That's a lie. I don't like talking recruiting, but. This summer, Ryan, we are going to be tracking everything, especially as the MLB draft is taking place, as the portal class starts to come together. Because it's really tough to even like project rosters year to year until the portal stuff plays out. I mean, like this time last year, I was not talking about Vahiva Aloy. I was not talking about Ty Wilmsmeyer. I was not talking about Jack Wagner or any of these guys. Uh, even Hudson White, I wasn't talking about. So it's like you you kind of just have to wait and let it play out. It's tough to really like pencil in anything for the lineup until we know what goes on here. Uh, Hayden Pound says Adolis Garcia hit another bomb off the Astros as you're reading this. Uh, that guy's awesome, man. I ain't got nothing, nothing bad to say about him. You're probably right. Uh, Will Lennox says Souza reminds me of Caden Wallace. Can't keep off the field because they produce. Yeah, uh, and I don't. That's not a, that's not a crazy comparison either. I mean, Caden Wallace, super super well rounded guy. Uh, love that. And, uh, yeah, Caden Wallace, they played him in right field as a true freshman. How crazy is that? Like, looking back on I mean, it makes sense. Like, you just had to find a place to put him in the lineup. Uh, I, I think Souza's the, – the only thing that – the only difference here is, like, left on left is a lot different than right on right. 
It just is. Like anyone who's played baseball growing up, they didn't like facing lefties, whether they were right-handed or left-handed. I think as a true freshman, it's really tough to throw a left-handed bat out there against a guy like Hagen. I mean, think about it. If Hagen Smith were starting against Arkansas tonight, I don't know how you reasonably as a coach put Nolan Susan in the lineup and you're like, hey, go hit. You know, I just don't know how you do that. Uh, I don't know how you do it even if for a right-handed freshman, but I just think it's a little bit tougher to, for those left-on-left matchups, and that's why you see Nolan Souza out of the lineup. But, I mean, I'm kind of with you where it's like just let them play, let them figure it out, let them sink or swim. Uh, let's see. Ryan McDaniel says, I mean, Souza was a top 100 recruit in the country from PG. I think he's on a similar but better trajectory as Peyton Stovall from a couple years. Yeah, I think Souza's, I mean, at, as, as of right now, at this point in Peyton Stovall's freshman year, he was banged up and kind of in and out of the lineup there for a little bit because he was struggling. Uh, yeah, Souza's gotten it going early, you know, a little bit earlier. Very similar pr- trajectories, and he was a big-time recruit. Souza was a legit, and Souza is the exact level of recruit that you want to have because obviously if you bring in the top 10 players in the class, you'll be lucky to actually get one of them to campus because those top, top guys end up going. But Souza was more in like the – you know, in like the draft boards last year, he was seen as like a third, fourth, fifth round pick type of guy. Those are the ones you can you can talk into coming to campus. Uh, Hagen Smith, similar type of thing, where he wasn't like the number one pitcher in his class. He was you know a little bit further down. Most of that was because of Tommy John. Uh, he was in that range where he was as, about as good of a prospect as you could realistically take to campus. Uh, I think all those guys kind of check those boxing boxes. My boy Hazelwood says he didn't have anything to say today which is rare. I feel like he's normally one of our better commenters. He says, don't have anything to say, just checking in. We appreciate you joining us nonetheless. Uh, L wants to know, is DVH transitioning to portal talent? Our recruiting class next year is pretty average compared to past ones. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess you commented as I was finishing up my little spiel there. But yeah, I think I'm not saying that it's going to be like every year it's going to be this way. I think it's going to be year to year. You just go on what you got to do. I mean, dude, two years ago, Arkansas brought in 10 JUCO guys one of which being Ben McLaughlin. Uh, that like it's just it's just different. Like year to year, you never know how you're going to construct your roster. And by the way, I know Nate Thompson is a polarizing figure here. Uh, nobody can question the job Nate Thompson has done as a recruiter. They've done a really good job whether it's freshmen, whether it's portal guys, whether it's JUCO guys. Arkansas is bringing in talent from every all over the country, every different way you could possibly do it. I mean, think about the lineup right now. I'm about to just go through it real quick. Uh, I'm just going to go through the stats page here. Peyton Stovall is a freshman. He's, he's a guy that Arkansas brought in as a freshman, developed him pretty good. Peyton Holt is a guy that they brought in from the JUCO ranks, developed him pretty good. Nolan Souza, another freshman. Ben McLaughlin, another JUCO guy. Jared Spraglot, Portal, D1 Portal. They can do that game too. Will Edmondson, another JUCO guy. Vahiva Lloyd, blue chip Portal guy. Uh, Kendall Diggs, freshman that they developed. Ross Lovich, D1 Portal. Hudson White, D1 Portal. Uh, Ty Wilmsmar, D1 Portal. Uh, Jason Jones, freshman. Parker Rowland, Juco. Hudson Polk, D1 Portal. Ryder Hell. Like they, they have a nice mix. Like they're not dependent on one group or the other. It's not like it's going to be a lineup loaded with just, you know, guys that they've recruited themselves as freshmen. It's not going to be a lineup loaded with just D1 transfers or loaded with just Juco guys, which would be wild. Uh, I think they're going to continue to mix and match the way they have to. Uh, Will says, we need a big-time hitter like Condone, Jack Caglione, Dylan Cruz, Tommy White. We haven't had anybody like that since Heston Kerstad or Ben Attendee. Uh, Yeah, I mean, sure. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Like, yeah, I'm I'm sure it would be nice to have uh, the best players in the country. Yeah. I mean, Arkansas's Arkansas had, you know, you mentioned two guys right there. Arkansas had a couple guys kind of in that class here in the last decade, like, those dudes don't grow on – like, they're not just there. There's not, like, 12 of those every year for you to just go grab out of the high school class. Uh, I would say Arkansas went and got the number one shortstop in the portal in Vahiva Loy, and he's a big-time hitter who is, you know, could be on that type of level next year. I think he might be. Uh, Hudson White has been, you know, not as good as they had hoped he'd be. He, he would be. But, uh, you know, they went, out, they, they went out and got the top catcher in the portal, like – it's not like Arkansas doesn't bring in a ton of talent. Uh, you could argue that talent underachieves a little bit, and that's the conversation that Arkansas really needs to be having is why are they not able to get more out of these guys? Uh, but, you know, for the most part, like, <laughs> I think that's a little bit tough when people are like, hey, why don't they just have seven Hagen Smiths, <laughs> you know? Sure, it'd be nice. 
Uh, Mary Ellen was backing me up on my walks thing. Blake Snell led the league with 99 walks and won the Cy Young. Uh, so walks don't matter as long as runs don't score. Uh, in a nutshell, yes, pretty much. I'm with you. Uh, obviously, you don't like walking, but it is what it is. Uh, Flying Blind says, which bat do you think wakes up for the Hogs this weekend? I'm thinking Hudson White. Hudson White. Now, Hudson has been, hasn't been bad lately. He really hasn't. I just want to see the power from that kid, man. Like, still only one home run on the year. He's getting some hits, but all of his best hits this year have been on the ground, it seems. Uh, it just doesn't elevate the ball as much as I thought. I really want to see some power stroke, but I'm going to go with, uh, I think Peyton Stovall is going to have a, ma- I mean, not that Peyton Stovall has been asleep. I think he's going to have a massive weekend. I think Stovall is going to end up hitting the hitting around like 345, 350 on the year, OPS over one. Like, I think he's one of the best players in the country. And his stats are good on the year. I think he's going to end up being even better by the end of the year. So there you go. Suck on that. Um, yeah, yeah. And then Will follows up with, uh, just as long as we keep up, keep our pitching up and just get the bats going toward the end of the year and we get hot, we would have a chance. Yeah, and like I've talked about on the show a few times, you know, it's 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 a big misconception that, oh, you got to have a good pitch, uh, an elite pitching staff and an elite lineup to win a title. It's just not true, historically. You really, if you have one or the other and can kind of piece it together, You've got a chance, and Arkansas as a pitching staff has as good as anyone in the country. Uh, so it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't see a path to where they're going to have to win a bunch of slugfest to win a title. I think if Arkansas scores five, six runs a game, they're going to have a chance to beat literally anyone. I mean, if they had scored five runs a game last weekend, they might sweep. So uh, you know, I, I definitely think so. Uh, I'm with you. Like, I don't think that the the bar that this lineup has to reach is a lot lower than I think people realize sometimes. Um, yeah, Eureka String says, hope you keep doing these lives, man. Definitely takes my beer lunch during the work day to the next level. That's exactly, that comment right there is exactly what we were going for. Uh, you know, like, I just think, like, going live around lunch, especially on a Friday, nobody's working today. None of you people in this chat are doing any productive work today, nor should you be. It's Friday. Uh, you know, this is what I'm doing for work on a Friday. So it's like, yeah, I want, like, I want us to have these nice little pre-weekend chats. Maybe we'll start doing a little post-weekend chat. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I like that. Uh, Flying Blind says, since 2020, who has been that one dominant hitter that you want in a must win at bat? Uh, definitely not Robert Moore. I don't know how you slipped him in there like that. Uh, Caden Wallace is probably your answer just because like he's so well rounded. And, uh, you know, what's crazy is Caden Wallace is so good. If you go back and look at his 2022 season, which like he hit like 300, like 15 home runs and a bunch of doubles and whatever. You could make a real argument Caden Wallace underachieved at the plate that year. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, Jared Wagner, stud, man. It's hard not hard, not hard to uh, argue with having anybody other than him up there. And uh, like I just mentioned Peyton Stovall. I think he's going to end up being kind of in that uh, in that little range there. Uh, so Ben Glassford says Auburn hosted a regional last year but got bounced going on to. That's tough. I didn't, but if they made the postseason, like, okay. Because I, I think they missed it in 2021. Missed the postseason, but then in 2022, they go to Omaha. Uh, had a disappointing NCAA tournament appearance last year. Now they're going to miss the tournament this year. I definitely don't think Butch Thompson's getting fired after this year, unless they just lose out or something crazy. Um, but I don't know, man. Who knows? Uh, I, I think I think next year he'll probably have a little bit of a hot seat. But Butch Thompson has accomplished a lot at Auburn, especially relative to uh, to like the level, that the, like the standard the program had before him. Uh, Will wants to know who gets the job after DVH. Tony Vitello. Yeah, Tony Vitello's, I mean, he's going to be in the mix. Like, unlike, you know, who knows? Because who knows when DVH is going to retire? Who knows if it's this year, three years from now, six years from now, 10, who knows? Uh, but as of right now, if you're asking me on April 19th, 2024, Tony V's got to be at or near the top of the list. Uh, Matt Hobbs is the one that I would, I'm starting to kind of warm up to that idea just because the longer he's at Arkansas and turning down other jobs, I feel like DVH is going to kind of want to owe him something. Like, I don't know if any of these guys have been promised behind closed doors, stuff like that. Uh, and again, the timing of it all matters. I think Wes Johnson is another former Arkansas <laughs> coach that you can keep an eye on there. And who knows? Like, in three, if, if DVH retires in three years, I don't know who the top coaching candidates are going to be in three years. Who the hell knows? Might be Butch Thompson. Who knows if he gets Auburn you know, cooking? Who knows? Maybe it's him. Uh, but I think Arkansas is going to have their pick of the litter. And I think Tony Vitello would have a hard time saying no to the Arkansas job. I'll just say that. Um, Kim Muckleroy, 
uh, love Kim McElroy. Says, hey, Andrew, having procedures done at the hospital, but wanted to drop in and say hi while I'm between scans. I really appreciate that. Appreciate you, uh, Kim, always tapping in and commenting and saying good stuff on our shows. Uh, really appreciate your support. Also, when you get done at the hospital, hope everything's going well, by the way. When you get done, you get to watch it all in reverse. You get to just you know, start it from scratch and uh, live vicariously and pretend like you were living in the moment. But I hope everything goes well for you. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, Preston says he doesn't believe the, the Florida's track man. They posted he hit one 460 to left field, but the video showed a wall scraper to right. Uh, who knows? I'm not here to, uh, you know, I know Auburn's track man was a little sketchy. They had that Ryder Helfrick home run is like 350 or whatever it was that one time. But, you know, who knows? I think track man, who knows? Uh, Ryan McDaniel says no to Tony V. I think the obvious answer is Hobbs. Uh, okay, why no to Tony V, if, if, if you don't mind me asking? I mean, I, I, if, I'm i sure it has something to do with the antics and the culture and whatever. Um, I would just say to that that DBH disagrees with you. He loves Tony V. Uh, I don't know. If, I'm not guaranteeing Tony V is going to be the head coach, but like if, if, if Tony V takes the Arkansas job, y'all better all do, the, you do whatever you got to do. It won't be hard to talk yourself into it, but... Uh, I, it's hard to disagree with Matt Hobbs, and that dude's a sharp guy, man. He really is. Like anytime we talk to him, he's really thoughtful. He's done a hell of a job at Arkansas as the pitching coach. I mean, it seems like every year they're just kind of building and building and building, getting better and better. I mean, he's got the best pitching staff in the country this year. It might lead Arkansas to a freaking national title. Uh, if Arkansas were to win a national title, that was like, you know, every game was three to one, four to two, stuff like that, and they're just really shutting dudes down in Omaha, and they win it all because of their pitching staff, which is very much in play. <laughs> it really is. I think that would kind of heat that up because I think nationally people would really start talking about Matt Hobbs, really start coming for him. I think he would start getting offered like crazy head coaching jobs, like like that Auburn job. You talk about it, if the Auburn job came available, if it's this offseason, Matt Hobbs is going to be near the top of that list. I think that would help his chances if he's going to try and position himself as the next head coach at Arkansas. Um, but I think it's I think it's definitely worth noting that he and Thompson have been at Arkansas for what is it now six seven years. I know they came in slightly different. I think Hobbs is a year after him. But this coaching staff's been together a while. That's not a coincidence or like something that happened on accident. I know it was really important for DVH to keep this staff together. And I would love to know what those conversations were like, like last off season or the off season before. If he's telling Matt Hobbs, hey. Stick around, stick around, and maybe I'll give you the key. Like, I wonder if some of that stuff has been happening. Who knows? Um, let's see. Let's see. A lot of Dylan Leach talk on the on the pod today. Uh, Flying Blind says, won't ever forget Dylan Leach hitting for the cycle with a homer from both sides of the plate. Showed great flashes. 100%. One of the best performances anyone's ever seen. I mean, it's hard to do better than that in a game. It was awesome. Uh, it also was, like Ty Wilmsmeyer's year at Missouri last year, a complete anomaly. A little bit. Like, no disrespect, but... Uh, Preston says A&M just scored six unanswered runs to take the lead at BAM. I'm not looking forward to going to College Station. Nobody should ever be looking forward to go, going to College Station, but no. A&M is uh, A&M's nasty, man. It's going to be it's going to be a fun series, man. It's going to be a tough competitive one. Cannot wait. I hope it's number 1 versus number 2. That'd be sick. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Why can't Hudson White get his back going? Just doesn't elevate the ball, man. Although I will say it's not like he like if you look at the numbers, Hudson White has not been bad in SEC play. I think he's hitting just under three hundred in SEC play. He's had some big hits, had a couple big hits against uh, Bama last weekend in the even in the series they all sucked. Uh, but you know he's been he's been fine, and especially for a catcher, we're talking about a catcher who's catching every day. So it's like you know the bar shouldn't be that high offensively. But I you know we'd all be lying if we said Arkansas was not expecting more out of uh out of his bat coming into the year we'll see z goose says they do best not to come here and learn from nate thompson uh i think z goose i don't think nate thompson's gonna be at arkansas forever i'm just gonna say that don't think he's gonna be at arkansas forever i think he will move on to greener pastures one of these days uh so i don't think anyone who's in this current recruiting class or next year's recurrent recruiting class is going to be like super, you know, signing on to live with Nate Thompson. I think, I think, I think uh, Nate Thompson, depending on how this year plays out, I think they will want to keep this staff together. If they don't win the title this year, they'll want to keep it together and win the title next year. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, but I would not, I would not be like, I don't think Arkansas is married to Nate Thompson. 
Uh, let's see. Dennis says, do you know when they have to release the travel roster for the weekend? I thought they said Jones was left off last weekend. Doubt that will happen after his tech ABs. So they usually, Dennis, literally, it's like within an hour. Like, I don't, I, I bet as of 1.05 p.m., I doubt they've even turned in the travel roster yet. If I'm being dead serious. Uh, they also tra- they travel way more than 27. It's a 27-man roster. They'll take 30 to 35 guys. Uh, not all of them are on the roster every weekend. And Jason Jones has been le- – he was left off against LSU. I don't know for sure if he was left off last weekend. If you heard that, I'm sure it's accurate. Um, I doubt he's left off this weekend, though, if I'm being honest. But uh, they usually make those decisions like pretty pretty late, like within a couple hours of first pitch. Who knows? Uh, they, they're very weird about it. Every time I talk to the SIDs about it, I'm like, hey, can you just send me the roster? He won't do that, but he'll answer my questions of like, is so-and-so on the roster? Is so-and-so on the roster? Um, so who knows? I will I will text the SID, and if hey, if he lets you know, I or if he lets me know, I'll post it on the Discord, which everyone should be in. Uh, will Lennox says, Caden probably could have played over Cullen Smith or Nesbitt his freshman year. Uh, Caden, Caden played, he played every day his freshman year, but he was playing in right field. Uh, and then I think in the offseason, they kind of realized... They, there was a lot of talk that Caden Wallace might be like center field might be the spot for him. Ended up not being the spot, but uh, Colin Smith was nasty, man. Uh, obviously, like Caden Wallace is better than Colin Smith, but like Colin Smith was not a bad third baseman at Arkansas. So I think that it worked out. I think they made the right decision uh, having him in right field there. I think it worked out pretty well, especially because Arkansas had uh, a shortage of outfielders. And so someone compared Nolan Souza to Caden Wallace last year or earlier in the chat. Uh, I think that's actually a great comparison because Caden Wallace. Obviously was not a right fielder, but he played right field because that year Arkansas didn't have. They had Christian Franklin in center, Braden Webb in left, Zach Gregory. Like They didn't feel as great about their outfield as they did their infield with guys like Robert Moore and Jalen Battles and Cullen Smith, who was really good. Uh, no Cullen Smith. We don't, we don't slander Cullen Smith around here. and We don't we don't slander Jacob Nesbitt. I love that guy. Uh, but, no, I think I think it worked out. I mean, Caden, Caden, Caden played every day. Uh, Deets update. Brian McIntosh wants to know. So there's the the MRI that they referenced last week came back negative. The X-ray was negative. There's no like structural damage going on. I think, like I said last week, it's a little bit of just kind of getting him in the flow. I mean, this is, a, this is a true freshman who hasn't thrown a ton and is coming off of an injury and he wasn't throwing a ton during the injury. It just takes a while to get back in the flow of things and you're feeling soreness in between starts or in between outings like – it's just a little bit different. It'll be about about kind of getting him ramped up. Uh, I don't believe he was on the roster the last two weekends for the travel or the the twenty seven man. Who knows this weekend? I was a little surprised we didn't see him in the midweek. Uh, I'd love to see him in Little Rock if we can, but uh, I don't. I, I just don't think they're going to be like trying to rush him and force him into a situation. I think they're going to take their time with him and Dylan Carter and Hackman and like all these injured guys. Like I just don't think. Especially with this pitching staff, it's not like you have a need where it's like, oh, we gotta, we gotta overuse, it. we gotta throw them in here just because we need them. Like I think they have, they've got a, uh, they've got enough time and enough options to kind of work them in. Uh, yes, Stovall is gone after this year. He's gonna make a lot of money this summer. Uh, love that, uh, Kingsley. Shout out, my boy. Uh, always appreciate you tuning in. You and your beautiful wife. Love y'all. Look forward to hey, come up to Fayetteville soon. Also, Kingsley. Jeez, man. I'll, you know, I'll talk to Hillary. You, you, we got a guest bedroom. Just, just let me know. Pull up to Fayetteville anytime. We got to get you. We got to get you a good experience up here, man. Let's see. Let's see. Anything else we got going on? Anything? Anything else we got going on? JT Hazelwood says, "Wish we had a tree out in the hog pen that hitters grew on." Let's ask Jerry if he'll pay for it. Yeah, who knows, man? We'll see. How, we'll see if the recent NIL surge. Uh, in other sports, helps Arkansas in baseball. Arkansas has been doing pretty well on the NIL front in baseball, contrary to popular belief. They've done really well in the recruiting aspect. Uh, you know, would love to see Arkansas, especially if Arkansas is going to go to Omaha, which means you're not able to recruit for those. I mean, you can recruit, but not as heavily as you would as some other teams are. Uh, Arkansas really used that to their benefit last year, getting bounced early. They went ahead and locked up Hudson White and Vahiva Lloyd before anyone else could even really get out in front. Uh, if Arkansas gets behind in recruiting by going to Omaha, might have to whip out that checkbook. Might have to whip out that checkbook. We'll see how they do it. Uh, I like it, man. Okay. Eureka String says, I just hope we sweep Kentucky just to shut those MFs up for a while. Yeah, that'd be nice. That that It's going to be very funny 
uh, that series between those two fan bases, which have been going at it for a month here now. Uh, Devin Talley says, have Calipari attend the series versus Lex in Lexington. That would be crazy if they sent him on the trip. Uh, I want to see Calipari throw out the first pitch against Florida this this up uh, next weekend. That's just me. We'll see how they do it. Uh, would be awesome. Uh, Ryan McDaniel followed up on his Tony V hate. He says, I don't like the Tennessee culture at all. They seem like they are all arrogant a-holes with so many players on that team that are unlikable. That has to be coming from the top. Yeah, Tony V... Uh, Tony V is a dirtbag. And I mean that in like a like everyone who played baseball, you there's a lot of dirtbags. Tyler Spoon was calling Peyton Holt a dirtbag earlier. Uh Arkansas's had some dudes like that. Like, let's just be real. They've had some dudes like that who like to get after a little bit, like to showboat, like to do whatever. Um, I agree to an extent of like, I don't think it would be as rampant at Arkansas. Because Arkansas is a little bit different. It's just a little bit different. But when you're at Tennessee and you're trying to build a program that's, you know, coming from not much. I mean, there was not nothing was going on at Tennessee baseball before Tony V got there. I think they needed a little bit of that extra juice, a little bit of something to stand out, rub some people wrong, the, the rub some people the wrong way, ruffle some feathers. Uh, I think Tony V is like a bombastic guy bombastic uh i don't think it would be as rampant at arkansas i think he has a little bit of that to him i mean it's a dude who drives a freaking lamborghini and listens to rick ross on full blast all the time like he's gonna be a little showboaty uh, i don't think it would be as crazy and i think that's something that dbh you know him and tony v are boys he respects them they're they're really good friends i think that would be something the dbh would talk to him about of like hey we can be fun we can have fun and we can do the gorilla ball stuff but let's tone it down and let's, let's be a little bit less ridiculous um but ultimately, like that kind of stuff, I, I, I'm not as weird. But I kind of like that kind of stuff. Not not as much as Tennessee goes over the top with it. But I think letting it hang loose a little bit is something that they're always going to do with Tony V. But you can't deny what the dude's done as a head coach. He's been unbelievable. He would do a great job at Arkansas. I think people should be uh should be all in on that. But I understand your point and where you're coming from. I get it. Um, Logan Evans says I think DVH retires year after he wins a Natty just to see if he can go back to back. Okay, gun to my head. If if you told me Arkansas won the national title this year, which you know, like they're borderline the favorite to do it. If they win it this year, I agree with you, Logan. I think he would come back one more year, but that whole year would be about just kind of seeing if you can win it, go back to back. But he would be on. He would be making his phone calls, talking to Tony, talking to Matt, kind of getting things in line. Because I don't think DVH is not spending this season right now getting stuff lined up for his successor. He's just not. He's worried about winning the national title. They're locked in on one goal. I think everyone always asks and says, like, acts like they know what's going on or what DVH is thinking. I think DVH is thinking, how are we going to beat South Carolina tonight? I think he's thinking, how are we going to beat South Carolina tomorrow? How are we going to get this team ready to compete for a national title in June? That's what his focus on. That's what his entire staff's focus is on. If they win the title this year, that's when he'll start having those conversations. I don't think he's going to call it a day. Uh, after this year, I think he would go one more year. So I think uh, you know ball, Logan. Congrats. You know ball. Uh, Will Lennox said, should have thrown the bag at Braden Montgomery. Bro, they threw the bag at Vahiva. They threw the bag at Hudson. They threw the bag at Mr. Mason Molina. Like, it's only so many bags to go around. Uh, I think Braden Montgomery, if you throw a bag at him, it's harder to get those other guys that I just mentioned. Although, if we're going for a cost-effective analysis here, uh, probably could have saved some money and uh, just had Ryder Helfrick behind the plate, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, let's see, Garrett Olstead. We got there's some nice comments coming in here at the end here. So I didn't mean I didn't plan on this going an hour and a half, but it looks like it might. Garrett says obviously Molina and Tiger have remained steady and have provided great starts and chances to win, but do we think one of them can get back to their early season dominance? Uh, if Arkansas keep you know goes back to playing non conference opponents, maybe. <laughs> I think I think they've they've both are just playing in the sec now. Like it's not like they've been worse or better or anything like that. Uh, I think tiger went through a stretch where he was a little fatigued, but uh, I think he's been fine. I mean, both those guys like Mason Molina and sec play as a three sixteen ERA, 32 strikeouts, 25 innings opponents hitting two eleven. tiger's ERA is a little bit up four fifteen, but 24 strikeouts, 21 innings opponents hitting two thirty one. Uh, both those guys have been good in sec play tiger more so lately. Like he had a couple starts there where it was shaky, but, I think both those guys have been good all year. Uh, it's just level of competition, man. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna dominate that garbage Michigan team. You're not gonna dominate South Carolina the same way you dominated Michigan. 
You know, like it's just a little bit different. Uh, but I think from a stuff standpoint and from a what they bring to the table standpoint, I don't, I don't honestly think there's been any drop off from that. Uh, but who knows? Uh, yeah, Mary Ellen says, from what I've heard, Matt Hobbs, I think he really likes the development aspect of college coaching, so I'm ha- hoping that means he won't leave. Uh, another part of that is I think Matt Hobbs really enjoys being a pitching coach. Uh, obviously, I'm sure if he were you know handed the keys to the Arkansas Razorback baseball program, I'm sure he would take it, but I don't think he's one of those guys who's like waking up every morning, like counting down the days until he can be a head coach. I just really don't think he is. I think obviously, you know, the Arkansas job, no one would turn down that job. I wouldn't turn down that job. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't, but like, I don't think Matt Hobbs has a burning desire to go be a head coach at any costs. Uh, I think Thompson would leave for another head coaching situation sooner than he would, and I think he will sooner than than Matt Hobbs will. Um, but yeah, I I don't think like Hobbs. I think he really enjoys what he does now, which is that development aspect, just coaching the pitchers and being that guy. I'm sure he would talk himself into it and all that, but I don't think he's like knocking on DBH's door like, hey. I got to be a head coach. I got to be a head coach. Like I think he's pretty, uh, pretty convinced with, or pretty content with what he's doing right now. Uh, Kingsley says life update. Takasha passed, passed her cert- certification exams yesterday. We officially have a master's candidate in the house. Shout out to Kingsley and his beautiful wife Takasha. Great folks. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, everyone clap. Uh, let's see. Eureka String says they still got to get you PATP, bro. Is that Pot at the Palace. What you want me on Pot at the Palace for? I mean, I I love I love basketball. I love talking basketball. But uh, and I've been I've been on an episode or two of Pot at the Palace. But like, man, dude, I'm gonna let those I'm gonna let those guys who live and breathe basketball. I'm gonna let them take care of it. They're uh, you know, they're doing a great job, man. They don't they don't need any help, man. If you've been seeing their their content, what they've been doing, they've been absolutely crushing it, man. They don't need me dragging them down here. I'd be like the uh the piece the be the like a basketball player that enters the fold and then all of a sudden everyone else is. Kind of like it just ruins the flow, the chemistry. I think that might happen there. Who knows? All right. Boys, I appreciate you guys tuning in here. I appreciate you guys. We're, we're winding to a close here. Uh, so, you know, any last thoughts before this before this series gets going, before I dip out on y'all? Really appreciate you guys tuning in for another fun live chat edition. Uh, like I said, we're going to keep doing these. I'm hoping to do another one next week. Uh, you know, it's been very productive, been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we'll see how this series goes. And maybe Sunday, if it goes a certain direction, I might have to do an emergency live stream. We'll see. But uh, again, also another thing is we're doing this now here on the Natty State Sports YouTube channel, which has a huge, you know, almost 5,000 subscribers now. It's kind of why we do it. I need you guys' help helping me blow up the Bombastic YouTube channel so I don't need to go do it over here at the main Natty State channel. Not that I don't love that, but just because, you know, it'd be nice to have our own little community. We got to keep helping it grow. We just crossed... 400 subscribers on the bombastic youtube channel which we started two months ago so i feel pretty good about it but uh need you guys help continuing to build up that channel uh if you're not already subscribed go subscribe to the bombastic youtube channel uh it has its own separate page really appreciate all you guys support really appreciate you guys tapping in uh and kingsley one last congratulations great stuff we love to hear that love the vibes in these stream man really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out and bringing the heat as you always do Uh, This has been another productive episode of the Bombastic Podcast. Uh, Let's go get a sweep. Let's go get a road sweep. All right. I'm going to go before the last thing I say before I get out of here. I as of right now, I talk myself into it. I think Arkansas is going to sweep South Carolina on the road. I think Mark Kingston, the South Carolina coach, is going to get fired by the end of the year. And it starts this weekend. Uh, Scotty B, appreciate you pulling up in the chat. Uh, I'm about to come outside and we can go get lunch if you want. Uh, Talk to you guys later. Let's have a great weekend.